Today, Brian and I are out near sunny Carmel, California, taking a look at the all new Toyota Tundra pickup truck. Now you might know that there are already a number of videos on this on the channel, and there's a reason that I'm taking a look at it again. The first one is that this is the iForce Max model, and this is the first time I've been able to sample the model with a production hybrid system, not an early prototype. We now have pricing and fuel economy information on this model. And there's another reason we're taking a look at it, isn't there? Yeah, this one's special, Alex, because this is the all new range topping capstone trim, a first for any Toyota. This is the most expensive way you can get your Toyota Tundra. So if you've been looking at the Tundra and you thought to yourself the 1794 just isn't schnazzy enough, now there's a capstone for you. Be sure to let us know what you think of the Tundra's new design in the comments below. Yeah, Brian, you like the uh, the slightly less chrome look, right? Yeah, chrome is tasteful and I think sometimes less is more. In this case, that is absolutely true. I like this body colored section. If you don't get the capstone, then this becomes sort of a, a, a not quite chrome chrome, but sort of a dull chrome look. I like that too. I think I like the amount of chrome. You can get varying amounts of cheese grater in the middle. I think I like the grill in the platinum the best though. What do you think of this one? I like it actually. And I, I appreciate that it's not completely dark, you know, colors mm -hmm. all the way down the center. I like it does connect across with the chrome and the lighter sort of surround. It almost finishes it off a little bit better. And then of course, blue Toyota logo because all capstone models have the hybrid system. Nice touch. LED headlights are standard in this trim. And then of course we have the LED fog lights down there at the bottom. Actually I should say LED headlights are standard in all trims, but they do change a little bit from the bottom to the top. Toyota is really proud of the fact that this is the first model they've ever sold with 22 inch wheels. And honestly, I think they look small in this truck. That's true because this is a really big truck and there are only two body styles for the hybrid. This video is again focusing on the capstone and on the hybrid and all the trims the hybrid comes in. If you want a hybrid, it has to be big cab only. And the main reason for that is the battery has to go somewhere. That somewhere is right there under the rear passenger seats. You do have the choice of two different beds, however, a five and a half foot bed and a six and a half foot bed. But if you bump up to a capstone or a TRD Pro, you are stuck with the smaller of the two beds. That makes a lot of sense for the TRD Pro because that's going to make it more off-road capable. But of course, with this one, I kind of wish we had the option of that longer bed because that really would make this the ultimate Toyota Cowboy Cadillac. Wait, Alex, wouldn't that be a Cowboy Lexus? That's true, I suppose. But uh, how many Cowboys drive Lexuses versus Cadillacs? Let us know down there in the comment section. Out back, we have our pretty typical pickup truck design. The taillight modules remind me a lot of Hyundai Palisade taillights. These have a really cool sequential design in them. Though. Let us know what you think about that down there as well. Number of other cool touches back here when it comes to actual practicality though. Yeah, including this push button released for the tailgate over here on the side. Which is optional, it's not standard. Right. It also lets you step up into the bed with this easy step. Right. Yep. And then we have a damped tailgate right here, but no trick tailgate with bifold doors or pop out sections or fold up sections, anything along those lines. I do like the placement of the reverse lights down here. It really helps clean up the tail lamp modules. When it comes to cargo hauling, Toyota pulled a trick out of the Tacoma for the new Tundra. This has a fiber reinforced polymer bed. So the bed in here, this is not a spray in liner. It's not a slide in liner like we find in some other trucks. This is actually a polymer bed that is bolted to the frame. That means that you don't have to buy a liner if you don't want to. Although this texture is a little bit slicker than some other beds out there. That's something that General Motors has really had to work with their carbon fiber bed as well. And check this out, Alex. Toyota kept around the full width power retractable rear window. Yep, it's available only in the big cab, which means if you buy a hybrid, that's what you're gonna have. Under the hood, every Tundra is gonna have a turbocharged engine, but it comes in three different power levels. That's right, down at the low end of the lineup in the SR trim, you get 348 horsepower out of the gas only twin turbo V6. If you go up to a higher trim, that'll be 389 horsepower. And every V6 under the hood, except for that SR5, is gonna be 389 horsepower. Now we are driving the iForce Max with that logo right there on the hood. This has 437 horsepower total and 583 pound-feet of torque total thanks to the addition of the hybrid system. This is a full hybrid, not a mild hybrid, but it's very unlike every other Toyota hybrid that has come before, because this uses a single motor and a traditional 10-speed automatic transmission with a torque converter. So the design of this hybrid system is, oddly enough, exactly the same as the hybrid Ford F-150, including having a twin turbo V6 under the hood. The electric motor itself produces 48 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque, and it can drive the vehicle along in electric only mode. Fuel economy for the regular twin turbo engines comes in at 20 miles per gallon combined with two wheel drive, 19 miles per gallon with four wheel drive. The hybrid system bumps that up by two MPG, up to 22 MPG for the two wheel drive model, 21 MPG for the four wheel drive model, unless you choose that TRD Pro trim, then it goes back down to 20 MPG. So Alex, how long would it take someone to break even on their hybrid? 
Yeah, that's an interesting question. If break even is a concern for you, then you might not want to get the hybrid. Toyota says that this was primarily focused on towing, hauling, and off road ability rather than simply fuel economy, although there is a modest bump there. Uh, by my calculations, it would be about 260,000 miles or about 16 to 17 years of the average ownership cycle in America before you theoretically broke even at $3 a gallon. In this top end trim, we have pretty comfortable driver's seats with four-way adjustable lumbar support and a two-position memory over there on the driver's side. We also have a powered tilt telescopic steering column, but if you're looking for a pickup truck with power adjustable pedals, you won't find those in the Tundra. Jumping into the back seat, there's plenty of room in the hybrid because this is available only again in the largest cab that's available in the Tundra. And the, again, the reason for that is the battery. The battery is located right here under this storage area. In the hybrid, the 12 volt battery is over here on the driver's side, but from this angle, you can actually see the start of the high voltage battery right there behind it. The battery location is one key difference between this and the F-150 hybrid. The F-150 hybrid uses a liquid cooled lithium ion battery pack, which means that it doesn't need to be inside the vehicle where it can be air cooled and air conditioned along with the interior of the vehicle like this one does. Instead, it's positioned under the F-150, so you still get the same amount of storage under the seats. A question that I get asked frequently is why does Toyota continue to use nickel metal hydride batteries in their hybrids rather than liquid cooled lithium ion packs like we find in a lot of Ford hybrids? A lot of folks seem to think that this is old technology and it has no place in a modern vehicle. The truth of the matter is nickel metal hydride makes an awful lot of sense in a vehicle like this. It's less expensive, which can make the hybrids more profitable for Toyota, less expensive for you to buy. But also nickel metal hydride batteries have different characteristics. They tend to do better in colder weather. It's easier to deal with a nickel metal hydride battery like this from a reliability standpoint as well. This battery is air cooled, it's inside the vehicle, so replacing that cooling fan is gonna be cheap and easy. If you puncture a coolant line with your lithium ion battery pack that could lead to very expensive repairs. And then of course there's the maintenance of that cooling loop and the liquid cooling system. The fact of the matter is that in a hybrid vehicle like this, the battery technology just doesn't make as much difference. Now, if you were to have a full battery electric vehicle, that's where lithium ion batteries are important because they're more energy dense. But in a hybrid, when we're talking about a really small battery pack, the weight difference is actually completely consumed by the additional cooling loops, etc., that you find in a lithium ion system. Now let's take a quick look around this new capstone trim here. Pretty much all the ceiling components are the same. We have this large panoramic moonroof right here over the driver and front passenger's heads. It extends to almost over the rear passenger's heads as well. The front shoulder belts are height adjustable. The headrests are two-way adjustable. And the capstone trim gets this two-tone interior. All models are gonna be the same with this sort of off-white and charcoal midsection. Upgraded materials are what the capstone trim is all about. So lots of stitched goods going on here, lots of soft touch materials, but because this is still a pickup truck, you will find harder plastics down at the bottom of the door because those are definitely going to be more durable. The wood inserts on the doors and on the dashboard, those are actually real open pour wood in this trim. Now in this model, I cannot get the capstone to light up because it's not nighttime. Ambient lighting is found right there under this bar with the wood trim and right there in the middle as well. Stitch materials on the mid section of the dashboard. The upper section of the dashboard is an injection molded hard plastic on the passenger side, soft touch materials on the bulk of the dashboard over here by the driver's side. We then have this absolutely enormous touchscreen infotainment system in the middle here. This is one of the biggest screens you will find in a new vehicle for 2022. And if you use Apple CarPlay, it occupies the entire screen. Below that, we have the controls for the two front climate control zones. This does have automatic climate control there, two big air vents to either side, some large chunky buttons. Below that, we have some toggles for towing modes, 360 degree camera system in this vehicle, traction control enable, disable, and then adjustability of the ride height in the rear. Now this is not a full four corner air suspension like you'll find in a Ram, this is rear air suspension only. We then have brake hold, electric parking brake there, pretty traditional shifter right there like that. Qi wireless charging mat in the center. We have two decently sized cup holders. This is also where we're gonna find some of the drive mode buttons here, tow haul drive mode right there, four high, four low for the four wheel drive system. If you get the TRD Pro model, there's some additional functions there like crawl control. Now in this center console area, we have a sliding cubby up front, softly padded sections on either side, and it opens as one piece. On the inside, we find a storage area that's a little bit smaller than most of the domestic options. It's pretty common in American half-ton trucks for you to be able to put letter-sized hanging file folders in there. Here we have USB ports, some change holders, and then a little bit less room. No modern American truck would be complete without an integrated trailer brake controller available. I think they've done a good job in the location of that. I hate it when it's on the left side of the steering wheel for some reason. Obviously, left-handed people probably would prefer it over there, but I like it over here on this side. And it's not too close to the power button where you might accidentally bump it. The steering wheel is Toyota's latest 
latest new truck steering wheel design. We're going to see this in the new Sequoia and of course the Tacoma probably when it gets released. It reminds me a little bit of the Lexus steering wheel actually in the LS and the LC. These buttons over here control the multifunction LCD that is standard in the capstone trim. And then over here we have the controls for the adaptive cruise control. The LCD cluster is adjustable. On the left side here, we have our pretty basic trip computer functions. Traction control is turned off because of the drive mode of the vehicle right now, so it keeps popping that up. We have a big tachometer and speedometer in the middle, and then some auxiliary gauges on the right side. Those are adjustable, but there aren't too many different versions over there. You can, in addition to the four gauge look, which they call the tow gauges, we also have a simple two gauge view right there, and then a pitch and roll gauge. Let's address the first question on everyone's mind. With more power under the hood, but also, five to 600 pounds of extra weight, how does the zero to 60 time compare? Well, keep in mind, this is still a first drive. I haven't actually had the regular Tundra or the hybrid Tundra at home to do my usual zero to 60 runs on my usual test course. Now that said, the non-hybrid Tundra back in San Antonio, that one ran zero to 60 in 6.8 to 6.9 seconds, depending on the run. This Tundra near sea level in Carmel uh, which is close to where I normally run runs, uh, 6.8 seconds if the vehicle was in sport and the engine was running. If the engine was not running because it was in normal mode and it was doing its hybrid thing, 7.6 seconds. And that really just all has to do with the time that it takes to start the engine and get those turbos spooled up. When it's time to stop your truck, the 6-0 stopping distance on the hybrid model is likely going to be longer than a comparably equipped non-hybrid because of the added curb weight. Again, five to 600 pounds. Now, how do you feel about the feel of this hybrid system? I know you spent a lot of time this morning driving it. Of course, I'm behind the wheel now. So to be totally honest, I think that this whole sort of hybrid system could be a little bit more refined for me, a little bit smoother in terms of actual acceleration and what's going on, the transition between electric and gas only power. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know if it fits for me, the price tag you're gonna pay for one of these. I would say that since, I mean, you've never driven the non-hybrid. Correct. So, and I have, and I think that some of what you're feeling is the, just the 10 speed automatic transmission. Cause the 10 speed in the regular Tundra and in this one is not quite as smooth as the Ford GM 10 speed automatic transmission. Uh, but I will agree that because of the design of this hybrid system, there's a clutch pack that has to engage and disengage to start the engine uh, delivering power through the wheels that those transitions are never gonna be as smooth between engine on, engine off as Toyota's other hybrids. So there is a bit of a trade-off here, but Toyota was really interested in making this a rugged, durable hybrid system, according to them, for truck users. And that's why we don't see that next level of fuel economy improvement. Well, of course, there's more to improving fuel economy than just adding electric motors to your V6 twin turbo. That's true. So that's one of the things that a lot of people don't necessarily realize is that when a manufacturer makes a vehicle a hybrid, say a Camry to a Camry hybrid, they don't just add an electric motor. They add the electric motor and the battery, of course, but they also make rolling resistance improvements, aerodynamic improvements, and most importantly, they tune the engine to run on the Atkinson cycle, which is more fuel efficient, but gives up power. And in this vehicle, they didn't do any of that at all. It is exactly the same as the regular model. So, you know, in a way, this actually is a good showcase vehicle, as is the F-150 hybrid, because you can see how much fuel economy improvement does that simple addition of the electric motor actually give you. So this is my first time in any Tundra of this generation, mm -hmm. um, and I know they've switched to the box frame for the uh, platform, and I think you can definitely feel the difference uh, in the rigidity and the overall stability of the truck. Yeah, there's a little less wobble, especially in some of those off-camber, off-roading situations uh, that we were doing over, uh, earlier today. And speaking of off-roading, uh, if you get the TRD Pro model, we have a bunch of different crawl control modes, et cetera, going on, train modes, crawl modes, et cetera. And I have to say that all of them are way smoother than we have seen in Toyota products before. This uses the next generation in their crawl control and hill descent control and terrain management stuff uh, that we also see in the new Land Cruiser internationally and the new Lexus LX. Yeah, I know you commented on that for that video. It sounded like it's... it's and on the outside, it def you could tell the difference, right? From the outside, yes. it, was, it wasn't was herky-jerking. It was not, and it was yeah. quieter, too. That's the other That's thing. The, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> Much for, quieter. For a long time, Toyota products with their hill descent control, it sounded kind of like someone was just boinging a spring underneath the hood yeah. repeatedly. And then there was that herky-jerky moment, you're being boinged around in your seat. It was not a pleasant thing going down a hill. And I honestly 
doubted whether it was better than just using your foot on the pedal uh, because that motion of the truck actually meant that in some situations you're sliding down the rock when you don't really mean to and in this it is a lot smoother. The capstone trim gets acoustic laminated front glass and we're currently driving a 1794 edition That's right. I'll be yep. honest I think the, the difference isn't really too drastic they're both pretty yeah, quiet. It's not huge yeah they're both pretty quiet like any body on frame pickup truck honestly is um, but we do get those laminated side windows for higher speed quiet driving I honestly think you're probably not going to notice it unless you're cruising out on the open highway at 75, 80 miles an hour like you can in Texas. Of course, the 1794 trim was named after a ranch in Texas, so maybe that was the logic for all this. Perhaps. And one thing you will hear is the sound of the twin turbo V6, mm -hmm. and I have to say it's a good sound. It's not like there's no pumped in audio in here. There's nothing artificial to it. It sounds pretty good. Yeah, you definitely hear the turbos. You hear the rumble of the V6, and unlike a lot of Ford products, you don't hear augmented cylinders so this is never going to try and sound like a v8 like you know some generations of the f-150 tried the capstone gets those giant 22 inch wheels and mm -hmm. compared to the 1794 edition that we're currently driving Which i don't get slightly smaller wheels mm -hmm. yeah but i think they did a good job of you know making up for the giant wheel size the, the, the ride do. is still yeah. pretty good in both. now that's only if you get the adaptive damper set up in the truck you will feel definitely a little bit of a difference if you don't have that because steel springs are going to transmit more of that embroidered imperfection into the cabin uh, i think it honestly Honestly, is worth getting the adaptive dampers and the adaptive height suspension in your truck. Uh, the adaptive dampers obviously are going to have an improvement in ride quality and handling ability. And then if you do a lot of towing or hauling, you're going to want that adaptive rear air suspension. It's going to bring that rear suspension up to the right height, really improve especially emergency dynamics. Um, but this is not a four corner air suspension. I am surprised actually that Toyota didn't go in that direction and do what Ram did with the four corner air suspension because the Ram 1500 really has an epically smooth ride and I think it is still smoother than this generation of Tundra. Now let's talk about the tricky subject of fuel economy. Remember that this is not exactly a fuel economy focused hybrid. Obviously it was on the priority list but it was not the top priority with this hybrid system development. And in that respect, it is very similar to the F-150 hybrid. A lot of folks were sad that the F-150 hybrid wasn't a 30 mile per gallon half ton truck. And this is certainly not either. What have we been averaging so far today? Well, it's no Prius. It's about 16 is what we're seeing right now. That's true. Yeah, it's like some drive cycles. It seems to be a little bit higher. But in the combined cycle where we were going up and over a few mountains here, about 16, 16 and a half seems to be where we have been all day today. And in that respect, this is a little bit below what we see in the F-150, and that's borne out in the EPA numbers. The F-150 for 2022 uh, can go 24, 25 miles per gallon combined if you choose the right options there. Uh, and this is uh, tops out at 22, right, for the rear wheel drive version. And we've only been able to drive the four wheel drive models today. And this is a part-time four wheel drive system. So unlike some of the other trucks that are on the market, there's no auto mode. So the system is never going to send power to the front axle unless you request it. Logically, the reason for the fuel economy not being that next level where some people might expect it to be is the design of this hybrid system and the mission for creating this hybrid system in the first place. So who is this hybrid system really for then? I think it's for that person that wants the ultimate in Toyota's technology. They want the hybrid label, they want a little bit more pep, uh, and they want better fuel economy in the city. That is one, one key thing that I should mention is we haven't spent any time in like stop and go traffic or in the city. This is going to see a bigger improvement in those cycles. And when you look at the fuel economy numbers, that's actually really the only area where the Tundra hybrid or honestly the F-150 hybrid is above the non-hybrid model is in the city because the engine doesn't need to turn on, has an electric air conditioning compressor, etc. So if you're in stop and go or slow and go traffic a lot, this is going to be an improvement. Toyota also highlighted that apparently when trailer towing, it's going to have a slight fuel economy improvement. But I should note that at uh, none of these events have I really been able to have comparable back-to-back -back models with a trailer to do any sort of official testing there. But they claim a, approximately 10% fuel economy improvement in a combined cycle with the trailer. If you're interested in the new Tundra Hybrid, this is going to be on sale spring of 2022. So you should reach out to your dealer today if you want to be one of the very first people to get your hands on a Tundra Hybrid. There's probably already a long waiting list. Now, Brian, how much is that base hybrid going to set you back? So $52,300 gets you into a limited trim with the five and a half foot long bed and the Crew Max body style. That's about $3,400 more than the non-hybrid model. And as I recall, that doesn't actually get you any extra equipment except for the extra power and of course, the blue Toyota logo right there at front. Now, of course, if you spring for the Capstone or even the TRD Pro trims, 
you only get the hybrid. Yep, there's no other way to get your TRD Pro, no other way to get your capstone. And that TRD is uh, just under $67,000, right? Right, 66,805. And the capstone here, this is the most expensive way you can buy your Tundra, $73,530. And there is, uh, as I recall, only one option package aside from paint on this model. It's the advanced package. It's $1,045, has low leveling rear suspension, a heads up display, and adaptive dampers. And I honestly think if you're gonna get the capstone, just check that option box. You might as well get the fully loaded one because the adaptive dampers and the rear load leveling suspension really make this feel like a different truck versus the base model that doesn't have those particular options. As always, if you wanna know all the detailed pricing and comparisons for the new Tundra Hybrid, you're going to have to wait until we can get our hands on one for a complete week. But at the moment, this is notably more expensive than an F-150 Hybrid, at least as far as base price goes, because you can get the F-150 Hybrid in lower end trims with the hybrid system. In 2021, that was around $43,000 before destination. And this one for 2022 is gonna start at 52,300, but you do get all the limited trim parts. As always, if you wanna know more, hit that subscribe button at the bottom of your screen because I will have one of these at home for a complete week or Brian might have one at home for a complete week because you will be seeing a lot of him on the channel as well. Where else can they find you? They can find me at alexonautos.com as well as Alex on Autos on Facebook and Instagram. See all of you later.